uh, I named my uh, my farm uh, or my garden Deep Fork Gardens uh, because of this tool. Many people call this a broad fork. Um, I just call it Deep Fork because I'm. How different. heavy is it? And it's heavy. I don't know in pounds, but you know, 50 pounds or something. It's it's a little daunting when you first pick one up, but this tool, um, unlike a rototiller, is a joy to work with. Um, just it's silent. You could drive a uh, 18 wheeler over it without breaking it. It just doesn't churn the soil like a tiller does. Uh, and I'm trying to uh, mimic nature as much as possible in my growing. So. I use this fork, you can do it in the snow, you can do it when the soil's soaking wet, unlike a rototiller. A rototiller costs, a good rototiller costs a couple thousand bucks, um, and they break. And this tool costs $150, and it doesn't break, and it's good for the soil. So that's about it, loosening it on uh, these deep tap-rooted plants like dock will often uh, come out with the whole root uh, uh, just much easier to do the weeding and uh, you can do it all day if you want to stretch your hamstrings you know or your calves you can uh, be creative with this. There's no reason to hurt yourself. I'm an old guy and I can do it all day long, keep my back straight, unlike shoveling or hoeing, which is real hard on low back. Uh, the issue get the leverage you want. If it's too much of a pull, you back it off a little bit, and then you can lift it. Uh, the worms like it. I can hear the wind chimes. I can hear the birds. I can hear the frogs. I can have a conversation. If you've rototilled, you're alone on a rototiller. I mean, you're just shaking your body and you don't talk to anyone. You don't hear birds. You don't hear frogs. Um, so I promote this tool not only because it's cheap, um, but it's uh, better for the soil. It keeps the structure uh, intact. Rototilling just uh, pretty much trashes your soil. And, uh, and, and I like the idea that people can grow food without, um, without uh, spending a whole lot of money. My other favorite tool is a scythe or a scythe. Um, and this is an old tool. This is how people mowed back in the day uh, before there were uh, power mowers. Um, this particular one, this is the real deal. This blade is made in Austria the way they've been made for for hundreds and hundreds of years. It's a, kind of a layered steel. So it's it's not a, if you buy one in the United States, you get kind of a thrashing tool, but this is a razor blade on a stick. I think I can get as much work as a weed whacker. Weed whackers are, are pretty hard tools with the noise and they sling up the garter snakes and, uh, and scare everything away. Uh, garter snakes kind of feel the vibration of this coming and they leave. But you know it's only been maybe a hundred years that we've been mowing with petroleum powered machines. And this is what people did and it was communal people got together and had conversations while they were not mowing weeds like I'm doing, they were mowing grains. And after, I can do it, you, when you're out in a big area, you learn how to go down the row and you lay, you lay your, uh, your grass right in a, in a row. So it's a skill that's learned, but it's not a hard skill to learn. So the end product is you have the mowed area and then a row of wheat or some sort of grain. Then you come along later and, uh, and pick it up. But people did this in large groups. And again, doing this and talking to your friends and hearing the wind blow through the trees, to me, 
uh, just makes the, the work fun. Uh, Being on a mower is dangerous and noisy and, and it's, um, again, it's uh, petroleum. There's power in that and um, I like doing stuff with my body and uh, using less fossil fuels.